Hey, all right then guys, back for another video. Now I'm doing a bit of an experiment tonight. I've got a short loaded antenna on the roof of my car using the Mad Dog coil and about a 93 centimeter whip. It's actually two sections of a multi-section whip, which I'm using. So I'm going to compare that with a full-size quarter wave antenna, both uh, tuned for 20 meters. And we're going to see just how much of a um, well, how much of a compromise it is to run with that short base loaded antenna on the car roof compared with a full size quarter wave. Just how much are you losing running that length? Now that length has been kind of purposely chosen because a lot of the stock whips you get with screwdriver antennas uh, like the ATAS, the Tar Heel, the Diamond are in that sort of ballpark of around a meter to just, just under a meter long. What I'm going to do now is have a go at seeing uh, just how much of a difference it makes if it does, in terms of receive and transmit. And we'll try and listen as well to WWV on 15 megahertz. I'll just retune both antennas just to see uh, what, if anything, is the difference in terms of the received signal from that, uh, from that uh, station as well over in America. So it's a good old blustery day up here and I hope the wind isn't too bad. So we've got the Mad Dog coil. Okay, we've adjusted the collar to get it a tune on 20 meters. And there's the length of the whip. It's literally about 93 centimeters. So in conjunction with the length of the coil, what's that going to be? Probably be about three or four inches, 10 so And the whole thing's just over a meter long. So when we look at the length of the coil, it's from the point we've tuned it up to the top of the coil and then the antenna. So the whole antenna, including the length of the coil being used, just that bit there, is about a meter long or something like that. So over here, we've got the uh, quarter wave, bit of a, a lash up job. There's our radials. We're using the trusty ground spike. We've attached some, uh, some jumpers into some radials. Total number of radials used. Uh, we're using something in the region of about 32 meters in total of ground radials. They're all quite short, about two and a half meters long, or thereabouts, two meters long. So we're kind of using four bunches of four two meter radials, if that makes sense. Um, you can see it's a really blowy day. I've got the MRQ213 um, telescopic whip up there which is basically the knockoff of the MFJ 1971 okay now the distance between this antenna and if I go over here and the uh, you can see the other uh, the other one over there look is a back quarter wave it's not ideal it might be some interaction I know I know it's not pure test but it'll give us an idea of just how much of a um, compromise that antenna is compared with this full-size quarter wave, which measures just over five meters, that's about 16 feet high. Okay, so the way we're gonna do this, we've got the Ultramax LiPo 4 battery. You can just see at the bottom of the screen there, we've got the antenna switch. And here's the uh, the good old uh, 891, the trusty workhorse there. Roger YO2 EOC portable G5TM. My friend, I am just trying out two antennas. Would you mind just checking my second antenna? This is antenna one, antenna one. And this is antenna two, antenna two. Uh, go ahead. Quarter wave, loaded, quarter wave, loaded, quarter wave, loaded, quarter wave, yeah, it's maybe an S point in it, maybe, full size, loaded, how much difference, full size, loaded, full size, loaded, full size, loaded, Full size. Um, I did not uh, Load it. copy. Tango Mike, Charlie Tango 7, Alpha Whiskey Bravo. Charlie Tango 7, Alpha Whiskey Bravo. George, I am on the quarter wave at 12345 on the quarter wave, now swapping. And I am now, George, on the short antenna. 12345 on the short antenna. And now back on the quarter wave. QSL? QSL, QSL. You are 5755 in the quarter wave. Full, short, full, short, full. Okay, folks, we're going to try a bit of poter here. So we're going to have a go at doing a bit of parks on the air. We've spotted myself to try and get a few contacts. Um, concerning your antenna, uh, with my side, it looks uh, completely the same as the other one. Uh, no difference, uh, at least uh, I cannot see 
see any difference on the meter uh, when you're switching from one antenna to the other, Roger. Good evening, this is Oscar Kilo 1, Hotel Echo Victor. Yes, there is a little, little difference, team. The antenna one, <laughs> one seems to be a little bit better, but this is just one as point, okay? Charlie, Tango 1, Golf, Fox, Trot, Kilo. Let's tell them you are 5 and 6, 56, and that your antenna number one is better for me, okay? Oscar Kilo 1, India, Charlie, Quebec. Short, big, short, full, short, full, short, full. Full size, short, full size, short, full size. So we're on 15 megs, which I think is WWV. And I look it up, it's on the, it gives you a nice, solid, reliable sort of time signal. I think this is it anyway. So we're on, uh, listening on CW. So we're currently on the quarter wave, full quarter wave. Okay, so now we're going to switch to the short antenna. Quarter wave, short antenna. Quarter wave. 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 Short antenna. And the short antenna we rarely get above S3. Quarter wave. We reach S3 sometimes above. Back down again. Sometimes S3 on the short one now. Go to that big one, quarter wave. Just sometimes picking up to S4. Short one. Oh, that's a stronger signal there. So it's S2 to 3. Down to S1. Quarter wave. Occasionally just touching S4 to 5. With the short one. Kind of nudging towards S3. Just sometimes above. Quarter wave. You know, nudging towards S4 to 5. Sometimes just about going over S5. Short one. Again, back to the short one, look. Longer one. See, there's a big jump there. Back to the short one. Longer one. Short one. Around S3, S4, maybe S5. Quarter wave. Sometimes up to F6. Not a QSB, but there is a noticeable jump. That's the short one again. That's the longer one. That's the shorter one. That's the longer one. That's the shorter one. That's the longer one. That's the shorter one. One more. That's the longer one. That's the shorter one. That's the longer one. That's the shorter one. Okay. Right. I reckon there's a couple of S units in that, isn't there? Between one and a half, maybe one and a half S units. And maybe something like eight on eight to ten DB. It's in that ballpark, isn't it? Six to ten DB, one to one and a half S units, six to nine DB. It's in that ballpark. So there we are, interesting. So here I am back from the uh, the dark hillside and the driving rain. And we can see that in total, we looked at 48 examples of transmit and receive. The quarter wave won 38, so that's just under 80%. The short base loaded antenna didn't win anything. And we got a, a similar results shall we say, uh, on both antennas on 10 instances, which is about 21%. So to be honest with you, not a, a huge 
um, surprise there that the, uh, the short base loaded antenna never really came out on top. So we actually looked at 13 transmit only examples. This is where we asked stations to say which antenna I was stronger on. Quarter wave was stronger in nine, nothing for the short loaded antenna. And we got the same results uh, for both. Uh, no difference, the stations were saying which was four. Of those nine where the quarter wave was stronger, we got four back telling us by how much. So two were telling us by one S unit, two stations said that I was stronger by two S units. Now five of them said that the quarter wave was just the stronger antenna without giving me an actual S meter difference. Uh, we can probably approximate that it's gonna be somewhere between 0 0.5 and one and a half S units stronger. If we go down the 0 0.5 on average for those five, just, just a smidgen stronger maybe, uh, we get like a 0 0.7 overall um, improvement of the quarter wave, 0 0.7 of an S unit that is, up to about one S unit if we take those five as being one and a half S units stronger. Overall, we can probably approximate that this antenna, or both antennas I should say, when compared with each other, the quarter wave is just a fraction under an S unit stronger on transmit than the base loaded vertical. We're going to around uh, just 0.85 S units, just to give us a sort of middle ground. When the quarter wave was stronger, it tended to be when the signals were lower. When my transmitted signal from both antennas went below being strong, then the quarter wave seemed to remain stronger and the loaded vertical tended to drop off quicker. So for example, when we had the quarter wave of an S8 to S7, the loaded vertical dropped down to S5 or 6. The loaded vertical tended to be as strong, or you could hardly see a difference on transmit when both antennas were pumping out an S9 or S9 plus signal. Moving on to receive this time. Now we've got a bit more data with receive and I can tell you why that's the case here. Those were five stations that we uh, looked at on SSB plus WWV. With WWV on 15 megs, after retuning both antennas to make sure they were pretty much receiving as well as they could, um, we did two minutes, I did two minutes of about 25 quick A-B tests between the, uh, the base loaded and the full size quarter wave. The, um, the quarter wave came out on top for 20 times and the, um, the, the, the base loaded antenna came out on top, uh, sorry, didn't come out on top at all and they were the same sort of signal for five. So added to the five SSB stations, our overall receive summary is out of 30, 24 quarter wave wins, that's 80%, zero for the short loaded antenna and six where we had the same results, which is about 20% of the instances. So when looking at those WWV ones, the average difference overall is about one and a half S units, about nine dB. Overall, we have uh, an average improvement on receive for the quarter wave over the loaded vertical of around just under one and a half S units. That's about just over uh, eight dB. So um, on receive, there seemed to be a little bit of a bigger gap. Now, I think that was probably because I had a better source of data because WWV provided that data straight away. You just dipped in A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B all the time. With the transmit and the other receive stuff I got from SSB, I was in the middle of a sort of a mini pileup with a POTR activation and maybe the quality of data wasn't quite as good because WWV gives you a continuous uh, thing that you can look at all the time providing of course you can, the propagation is good enough to receive it, which it was. And uh, I think maybe the, the quality of the data we got and received was better because of that. Nevertheless, we can still come up with a pretty decent summary, I think, so here it is. So on transmit only, the quarter wave won by around five dB. I mean, we can basically say an S unit, okay? It says just under an S unit there, but let's call it an S unit. On receive, a bit, bit more of a gap, and that's could be where the quality of the W or the better quality of data provided by WWV might mean we may need to sort of increase the difference between these two antennas a little bit overall. But looking at uh, receive only then, uh, the quarter wave one on average by about eight and a half dB, which is near enough one and a half S units. So taking this as an overall thing, we can say, I think with some real justification that the quarter wave is gonna be at least one S unit on average better than the base loaded vertical, sometimes more. One to one and a half S units seems to be a pretty reasonable suggestion here. So a final conclusion for us. What have we learned today about comparing this 93 centimeter base loaded vertical, which is not even 20% the size of a quarter wave on 20 meters, 
and with the full-size quarter wave ground mounted for 20 meters. The 93 centimeter base loaded mobile antenna, which relies on capacitive coupling using a single mag mount, which isn't ideal, averaged around one, I would say one to one and a half S units down compared with a standard portable quarter wave antenna. You think about the difference in size, that's not a huge difference. This gap will gradually close as you move higher up HF as that small antenna becomes longer as a fraction of a wavelength. So it'll become basically double the size on 10 meters in terms of the, the comparison with the, wave, with the wavelength that you're on. And it will improve. So it will, if you compare that against a ground mounted quarter wave for 10 meters, then the gap should be a little bit closer. The small antenna was never worse than two S units weaker than the quarter wave on any single example of a transmitter receive. I never saw anything that was worse than about two S units down. So you have to give it credit. That little antenna didn't punch too badly above its weight at all. Uh, the small antenna never bettered the quarter wave on any single transmitter receive example. Then that's something we shouldn't be at all surprised about really, should we, because of the difference in size. And finally, on 40 meters, you are likely to lose at least probably another S unit or so, maybe even more, as that size of antenna then becomes just 9% the size of a quarter wave. But you know, a lot of these screwdriver antennas like an ATAS or a Tar Heel or similar antennas are sold with fairly short whips. Um, and on 20 meters and up, this has got me thinking that maybe those antennas, even with a stubby whip, say three foot long, 93 centimeters, whatever it is, will still perform pretty well. You know, it, it won't be as strong, but will it get you completely out of the ballpark on 20 meters up to 10 meters? No, it won't. It also tells us, I think, if you do use a longer whip, say a six, six foot whip, like 1.8 meters, or maybe a nine foot whip, certainly on 20, 17, 15, something like that, I'll be about 2.7 meters long, that you'll be pretty close, pretty close to a quarter wave. Of course, there were variables with the study, we had QSB, uh, we could have added more radials to the quarter wave, I didn't use that many, but there we go, when you're, when you're portable, do you put more than, say, six to eight quarter wave lengths while the ground radial's down on your lowest band? Possibly not, I would think. Two pretty convenient systems. I had a lot of fun using both of them. And I, for one, anyway, because I'm a bit of a nerd, I really enjoyed looking at this. And if you got something from this uh, video and you fancy looking at some more, there'll be some other examples of a video or two popping up in your screen right now. So think about clicking on those. And also think about clicking on subscribe as well. It'd be nice for me to know that uh, at least some of my content is hitting home and that you fancy watching some more. Take care and maybe I'll do some more of these experiments soon. Let me know in the comments section what you think. 7-3 and we'll catch you again. Bye for now.